wow, I think I'm in the shade. <laughs> I'm in the sun. Boy, that is bright. If you can't see me, tomorrow we'll have it solved. I think we're probably going to stay with the idea of being outside and uh, recording the devotionals because it's a lot easier to relate the beauty of what God is doing in nature and in the city as well as looking up and seeing just the wondrous things that sometimes happen in the sky when you're watching for the Lord's return. But, I mean, today I have these little frisky little clouds that are just beautiful. I mean, it just makes you think about angels, you know. And if I took some pictures, you know, somebody would say, well, that was photoshopped or photoshopped or whatever. And maybe I would have, but on some of these, wow, they're just gorgeous. There's one that looks like a dove. It's just beautiful. I mean, I could see how to do a new dove now. And there's some others that look like Hebrew characters. Some of them just look like splotches of modern art. <laughs> but it's the tapestry of God by way of his Holy Spirit using your imagination. Sometimes your understanding and your perception to reveal to you something he may want to share. And that's how he does it through his word lots of times is that two people could read the same Bible and get something completely different out of it. Because it's not just a book, but it's God, the Holy Spirit, who causes you to notice certain parts of it or to focus in on one verse or somehow knowing that there's a certain feeling you're having and he describes to you now about that feeling you know that God is speaking to you because it's the Holy Spirit that makes that what we call real to you. In the King James, he used an interesting word that people don't really study to understand it, but he quickens it to you. It is the Spirit that quickens it, you know, and that's what it means. It, you go, or wow, ooh, you suddenly are in touch or connected, interconnected with what is said there. And so, because God can quicken the word of God to you. He uses also devotionals and people sometimes and places and things to communicate to you in a way that you understand that no one else will know quite why you have or you do or you say that you know God the way you do. But in a personal way, God has spoken to you. And so he can do it audibly and he can do it physically and he can do it through quickening it, you know, or or making something real in your life, or through circumstances. But the point is, is that you know, because the Holy Spirit has caused you to know, that you're in touch with and communicating to God Almighty, through Jesus our Lord, our Savior, the one who made and opened the door for us to have fellowship, not just with Him, but with the Father. So, don't be surprised if God wants you in some way to share with others the same thing that you've learned that you're on your way to discover more about him today loneliness and they all forsook him and fled mark 1450 down through the ages all the simple acts of steadfast devotion of obedience and difficulty of loving service have been taken by me as an atonement for the loneliness my humanity suffered by that desertion, they all left me alone. Yet I, who had realized to the full the longing of the Father to save, and his rejection by men, the misunderstanding of his mind and purpose, how could I think that I should not know that desertion also, that even as the Father was deserted by his creation, so too I was deserted by those who loved me, who said they knew me, who wanted to follow me, even unto death. Learn, my children, from these words two lessons. Learn first that I know what loneliness, desertion, and solitude mean. I have been deserted. I have been left alone. Learn that every act of yours of faithfulness is a comfort to my heart. Learn, too, that it was to those deserters I gave the task of bringing my message to mankind. 
It wasn't by the high and mighty or the learned that I chose to use those lives that would touch other people, but by those who had already known what it was like to fail, to fall, to leave me, their Lord, alone. To those deserters, those fearful ones, I gave my power to heal, to raise to life, to comfort, to console, to conform into the image of me by my service to them, the same love that I shared with them, they would share with others. Would you not love the same as I have loved? Her successes are not the ones I use for the great work of my kingdom. They all forsook him and fled. Learn my tender understanding and pardon of human frailty. I know who you are. I know how you fail. I know how you failed. Not until man has failed has he learned true humility. And it is only the humble who can inherit the earth. When you look at men of God, when you decide for yourself that you want to share anything for God or with God, don't get all religious about it. Be you. God doesn't want perfect people to communicate his will. He wants his perfect will communicated in love and in mercy, because that is his perfect will. Not that anyone should feel that they have the right to condemn one another, but rather because of his son's death, they would have the ability to forgive one another to love one another, to bring salvation into the world and not condemnation because of what Jesus has done. So while it's easy to separate into specialty groups that you like this kind of worship or you like this kind of teaching or you like that kind of leader or you like this kind of ministry, those are all nice preferences and those are good and God can use them. But remember, the bottom line in salvation is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn it. The world's already condemned. It's just a matter of when that judgment will come. But rather he came to save the world. So don't rule out salvation to some soul, some person, somebody that you might not think would ever get saved. But rather, God might be using you who's failed so many times and been forgiven to touch a soul or a life that needs to see someone else who's not perfect either, but just might, just might inspire them to go on with God and discover that he has something for them, even as he has something for you.